Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we will be learning about the life cycle of malarial parasite Plasmodium. Malaria is an infectious disease which is caused by unicellular parasites belonging to genus Plasmodium. There are hundreds of species inside this genus Plasmodium which can cause parasitic infections in a variety of vertebrate organisms as well as insects. In human beings, five species of malarial parasite can cause malaria. These are Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium nolisi. Common symptoms of malaria are fever, constant muscular fatigue and pain, headache, chills and sweating, as well as a nauseous feeling. There is also an increase in the size of spleen, which is a lymphoid organ, because inside the spleen, the parasite is actually interacting with the fighting machinery of the body. Malaria is a global healthcare problem and takes a huge toll on world population each and every year. According to WHO's World Malaria Report of 2018, there were about 219 million reported malarial cases worldwide in 2017, out of which 435,000 were fatal. Malaria is endemic in tropical and subtropical regions of Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia and Latin America. Plasmodium, the parasite, infects the liver cells and the red blood cells in human beings. Let's talk about the life cycle now. The life cycle of the plasmodium can be divided into two stages, the sexual phase and the asexual phase. The sexual phase takes place in the Anopheles mosquito and the asexual phase takes place in humans. The asexual phase can further be divided into exoerythrocytic schizogony and erythrocytic schizogony. As you know, a plasmodium reproduces asexually by multiple fission, and this process of asexual reproduction by multiple fission is known as schizogony. The exoerythrocytic means outside the erythrocytes or the red blood cells, that is, it is taking place in the liver cells. The erythrocytic schizogony takes place within the RBCs. The female Anopheles mosquito not only serves as a host for the plasmodium, but also serves as a vector for the transmission of disease from an infected individual to a healthy human being. The female Anopheles mosquito carries the infectious stage of the parasite called sporozoids inside its salivary glands and thus when it bites a healthy human beings it injects into him these sporozoids as you can see in this picture so an infected anopheles mosquito is sucking blood of this human being and while it sucks his blood it is injecting the sporozoids inside the blood of the human being now let's talk about what happens once these sporozoids have reached inside the human being? First of all, they are going to make their way into the liver and infect the hepatocytes, also known as the liver cells. After they have infected the hepatocyte, they are going to reproduce by schizogony and result in the formation of a schizont, which has thousands of merozoids. Once this schizont ruptures, these merozoids are released into the blood of the individual. In Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale, however, the sporozoids after infecting the hepatocytes do not instantaneously undergo asexual reproduction. Instead, they enter into a dormant or an inactive state called hypnozoids, which remain inactive and do not undergo asexual reproduction for long periods of time. Thus, in these individuals, the symptoms of malaria appear sometimes even after months and years of initial infection. Also because of the presence of hypnozoids, there can be a relapse in the malarial infection long after the initial infection. These merozoids will now infect the red blood cells. Once inside the red blood cells, the parasite is going to grow in a membrane-bound digestive vacuole and it is going to hydrolyze the hemoglobin of the host RBC with the help of secreted enzymes. This results in the formation of this ring-like structure called early trophozoite, 
This early trophozoite can mature into a late trophozoite stage and the late trophozoite can carry out the asexual reproduction resulting in the formation of blood state schizont. This blood state schizont again has thousands of merozoites and upon the rupturing of this schizont, these merozoites are released into the blood of the human being. These merozoites are going to affect other RBCs and just continuing the cycle all over again. Some of the early trophozoites, instead of developing into the late trophozoites, develop into gametocytes, which are going to participate in sexual reproduction. The gametocytes do not undergo any change, they just remain the blood and they are sucked in by another Anopheles mosquito and they are going to travel into the gut of that mosquito. That is, the gametocytes are the infectious stages of the parasite for the mosquito. Once the gametocytes have been sucked in by the mosquito, they make their way into the mosquito's gut where they differentiate into a macrogametocyte and a microgametocyte. These are going to give rise to gametes which fuse together to form zygote. The zygote develops or differentiates into a oocyte, which further goes on to develop into an oocyst. Inside the oocyst, the zygote divides multiple times to form sporozoids. Upon the rupture of the oocyst, the sporozoids are released and these then travel and get stored into the salivary glands of the female Anopheles mosquito. When this mosquito is going to bite another healthy human being, it is going to inject these sporozoids into him, once again starting the cycle of infection. The next big question arises is how you can prevent malaria. The most important way of preventing malaria is by avoiding the breeding of the vector mosquito by preventing water logging especially during rainy season. So not letting fresh water collect in tires and drains and pools which actually serve as good breeding grounds for the mosquitoes. Also avoiding mosquito bites by using mosquito repellents, mosquito repellent nets, sprays as well as wearing full sleeved clothes especially during rainy season. Also blood transfusions should be completely screened because malaria is a blood borne disease and it can spread if the blood of an infected individual is transfused into a healthy human being. This is for the video on life cycle of malarial parasite plasmodium. Thank you for watching.